uh, welcome this is a continuation of previous lectures on circular motion so we have already studied on four lectures on circular motion so in this lecture we are going to have some standard problems so let me start with the first problem that is so the problem is what is difference in tension at the highest and the lowest position in vertical circular motion so suppose there is a circle that uh, uh, we has to be in consideration so let's the center is o so let's call the highest point let's call it as b let's call the lowest point as a let the velocity at highest point be v1 let the velocity at lowest point be v2 and we have to find the tension in the string so the tension at b is towards o let's call it as t1 and let's here it is t2 so finally what you have to find is so to find is t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 that is what it is you have to find what is the difference so if you see at point b so the velocity is in this direction it's it is v1 this tension is t1 and the particle has mass m so their mg will be in downward direction so if you write the radial equation of motion it will become t1 plus mg that is equal to mv1 square by r so similarly for the second one so this is particle at a its mass is mg acting downwards tension t2 is upward and the velocity is v2 so radial equation is t2 minus mg that is m v2 square by r so if you take these two equations and you just subtract it you will get t2 minus t1 minus of 2 mg is nothing but m by r that is v1 square minus v2 square and from the previous lecture i have told you that if the difference of two velocities has been taken so the the height is this h okay so you can directly calculate that v1 square is equal to v2 square plus 2 gh so okay and the particle is coming from up to down sorry this will be v2 square because i have taken t2 minus v1 so it is v2 minus v1 and the particle is coming from up to down so this v2 is higher so this is v2 is equal to v1 square plus 2 gh so from here v2 square minus v1 square is equal to 2 g and h is nothing but 2 of r so this is 4 g on r so this is m by r into 4 g r so this r r will cancel out this is 4 g r so from this equation you get this one okay so from here you can write that t2 minus t1 is equal to 6 not r this is m 6 mg okay so the difference bit of tension from the at upper to high uh, the highest and the lowest position in the vertical circular motion is nothing but 6 times the mass times acceleration due to gravity so now this was the first problem let us have one second problem so our next problem is again to find the tension so you have to find the tension in the string at the lowest position as shown in a figure so this is a hinged point let's call it o and this is a string of length l and there is a particle of mass m so at instantaneously its initial velocity is zero and when it is released so from here it is released so when it is released it come to its by having a circular path it comes to its lowest position let's call it as a so now the string has changed its position to this way o to a and it gains some velocity let's say a so at this instant of time when the particle is at lowest position what is its velocity so this v is what first of all and if you know the v then what is a tension in the string so v you have to just calculate in terms of r okay or sorry h in terms of r or h so let's have the solution of this problem again this is a circular motion 
So you, we can write, as I have told you, V square is U square plus 2GH, where U is the initial velocity at upper point, V is the lowest velocity at lowest point, as H is the separation between them. So initial velocity is 0 plus 2G, and H is nothing but the radius, or R is equal to L. So this is 2GL, so this is V square. So the velocity at lowest point is nothing but that is 2GL. So see how easily we get the velocity at the lowest point without using the energy conservation or any other laws. Now at point A, write the um, free body diagram. So it has a mass mg downwards, a tension T upward acting upward or towards the center of the circle. And this is the velocity V in this direction. So I told you to solve the circular motion problem, always write the radial equation of motion. So start from the radial equation of motion. So the net force towards the center is T minus mg, that is m and v square by r. And r is nothing but here L. So this implies that T minus mg is m, your v is v square is 2gl by r is your L. So the LL will cancel. This is 2mg plus mg. So the tension will equal to. So the tension will equal to this is 3mg. So at lowest position in the circle, the tension of the string is 3mg. Okay. So this was the second problem. Now there are now the third problem is very interesting. So let's have the third problem. So the next problem looks something like this. This is not the complete problem. Let me complete it. So suppose there are three paths. Uh, this is called as path A, path B and path C. And the velocity of the particle and the mass of the particle is m. And there are three different situations. And let me say that these all three paths A, B and C are not exactly circle. Not exactly circle these are not circles so that was the first thing and second thing that the velocity of the particle is constant so and now that let me define three terms that is na nb and nc na nb nc are the normal at extremum extreme positions normal at extreme positions it means that when the particle this, this particle reached here, that is a normal, let's say in upward direction or downward direction, wherever it will act, we will see it is Na. The normal at here is Na. The normal at here is Nb. The normal at here is Nc. Okay. So now the four options are given. The first option is Na is greater than Nb is greater than Nc. Second option is given NC is greater than NB is greater than NA. Third option is given to be NC is greater than NA is greater than NB. And the fourth option is NC is equal to NA is equal to NB. See, you, you don't have to find the exact value of NA, NB, NC to compare it. So how to compare it? This is not a perf not exactly the circle. So we are going to solve this problem by using the concept of circular motion. See, suppose at any given instant of time, when this particle of mass m reached at the higher highest position, then this is a this is not exactly the circle, but the small part can be treated as the arc of a circle moving in this radius. Okay, let's call this radius as R A. And its velocity is v0 that is constant. So at this instant of time, its mass mg will be acting downward and its normal will be Na upward. So for A, so I am writing here for A, the equation of motion will be mg is downward, Na is upward, and the velocity here is vo. So you can write mg minus of Na is mv0 square by r or you can write Na is mg minus mv0 square by r. So for A, I am writing this r as ra 
RA. So this is the first equation. Okay. See the consideration here was uh, this hole from A to this point C to B is not a circle, but for this small part, this small R can be considered as a part of a circle of radius R A. So for that arc, I am applying the circular motion concept. Okay, so that was the second. Part. Similarly, here you can treat it as V O having an another arc of radius, let's say R B. So these two things are similar. So from here you can conclude that for B N B is nothing but M G minus M V naught square by R B. Okay, so this will be R B. So now come the case third that is RC. So it will have an another horizontal circle. Let's call it as radius as RC and its velocity is VC and its MG is downward and its normal reaction is NC upwards. So this has a figure like this MG is acting downward. This is VC and this is NC. So for this NC minus MG is equal to MV naught square by R this is v naught rc so from here you can conclude that nc is equal to m v naught square by rc plus of mg now by seeing the figure you can conclude that this have a higher radius than this radius okay so let's see the results this is the first result and this is the second result and this is the third result you see mg 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 this is common in three terms the factor which defines which one is greater is the th second term in equation first and equation second you can see that this is a negative sign so na and mg are less than mg na and nb this na and nb are less than mg because a small factor mv naught square by r or mv naught square b has been subtracted. So this and here you have seen that mg is something is added to nc. So nc is always going to be greater than na and nb. Okay. So nc is greater. So this option is false because here mc is the lowest. So this option is neglected and we have seen that nc and nb cannot be equal so if they cannot be equal so this fourth option is also wrong now in the second and third option nc is greater okay now we have to compare na and nb so how would you compare na and nb you have to see the value of ra and rb so from figure it is clear that ra is greater than rb if ra is greater then if you divide by a, a higher value, so this factor is low for A as compared to B because RA is higher. So if you divide by a larger number to MV naught square, MV naught square is constant. So if you divide by a larger number, it will give you a smaller fraction. So from NA, you are subtracting a very small amount from MG. From NB, you are subtracting a large amount of MC. So from RA and RB this concludes that NA is greater than NB. So this is NB is greater than NB. So this option is wrong. So finally you came to the conclusion that this option NC is greater than NA is greater than NB. This is the correct answer. So sometimes it comes in uh, various competitive exams or while you solving the problem you have to consider uh, this type of consideration where the problem is not circular but the when when you have to find us at certain point you can consider that as a, a circular a small arc of a circle and you can apply the circular motion concept on that arc also uh, now from this problem there is one more thing what is the radius of curvature of these curves if someone has to find the radius at this point how will you have to find this ra and rb and rc so for this uh, let me tell how to find this so now I'm going to tell you the formula for radius of curvature in a curve. Uh, so suppose there was a y to x axis curve. 
so this was your y-axis this is your x-axis and this is some type of curve and at this point the let's the coordinate is x comma y so the radius of curvature at this point okay let's call this at r so and this is a function of x so this is y this is nothing but the function of x so this r is given by a formula that is 1 plus dy by dx whole square whole to the power 3 by 2 by d square y by dx square so i'm not going to derive this formula how it is came it's come from the calculus point so uh, this you should remember in many of the problems uh, that came in one of the problem that came in jest and one of the problem that came in tfr that both use this formula if you don't know this r how to calculate that you will not able to solve that circular motion problem so it is not too big or too lengthy to memorize it so i advise you to remember this formula so in the next lecture we will have some problems or at least one problem on this uh, curvature of radius of curvature problem and in the next coming lecture uh, we will have some problems on extended some problems on radius of curvature or at least one and then on extended circular objects problems and if you wish to study the circular motion in detail so in concepts of physics hc verma book that is a very good book to practice the circular motion problem and we will see one or two problems from there also thank you do share and subscribe the channel for latest updates thank you